Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. My wife and I have been looking at spermidine for a while, and we are thinking of starting to take it in June. We will present a review of spermidine, but first I wanted to go through this paper that I found interesting. The study looks at how supplementation with spermidine helped protect the liver and promotes mitochondrial generation while lowering oxidative stress. We are happy to say that Duna Age is offering a 10% discount to our listeners on their spermidine supplement, which contains four milligrams of spermidine per capsule. In our spermidine review, we will talk about a clinical trial which saw an improvement in cognitive function in older adults with 3.3 milligrams per day. For more details about the product, please click on the link in the description. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Spermidine supplementation protects the liver endothelium from liver damage in mice. There is a need to ameliorate chronic liver disease. And one method of this is through protection of the liver endothelium. Spermidine has been shown to enhance autophagy and prolong lifespan with beneficial effects in cardiovascular disease in mice and humans. In the study, they looked at the efficacy of dietary spermidine in two models of liver disease, induced by CCL4 and CDAAH diet. We will get into what these are in a short while. The study looked at human and mice cells in vitro and in C57BL mice in vivo. The spermidine was supplemented in the water before and during CCL4 and CDAAH treatment, so in a preventative capacity. They looked at liver damage, endothelial dysfunction, oxidative stress, mitochondrial status, inflammation, and liver fibrosis. Spermidine improved the endothelial response to oxidative injury in vitro and protected the liver from injury in vivo. It also improved the mitochondrial fitness. The study suggests spermidine in early phases protects the liver endothelium from oxidative stress and may impact the disease progression and fibrosis. What are liver endothelial cells? These line the sinusoids in the liver and are the liver's first line of defense. The liver sinusoid is a capillary which serves as a location for mixing of the oxygen-rich blood from the main liver artery and the nutrients in the portal vein. The endothelial cells and structures between them act as a filter for the liver and so perform an important task in maintaining liver function. It has been shown that autophagy is required for the endothelial cells to maintain homeostasis following an insult. Two models were used to cause damage to the liver in vivo. The first of these was with a choline deficient L amino acid high fat diet. This type of diet is known to cause similar disease to human non alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NASH, in mice. The second was carbon tetrachloride a powerful toxin which causes apoptosis or fibrosis in the liver. And how much spermidine did they have? There are a lot of assumptions and conversions in this calculation, so please take the final number with a grain of salt. But hopefully this is roughly correct. The spermidine was given to the mice in their drinking water at a concentration of 3 millimoles. I make this equivalent to 0 0.438 milligrams per milliliter. A mouse will drink about 4 milliliters of water a day, and so in this case get 1.7 milligrams of spermidine. The mice were all male, and on average at the age of 11 weeks or so would weigh about 28 grams. So this comes to 62 milligrams per kilogram. Converting to human using allosteric formula includes a factor of 12.3 to 1 and gives 5.1 milligrams per kilogram, or 356 milligrams for a 70 kilogram person. For spermidine, this is a large dose. If anyone wants to check my calculation, please let me know if I've got anything wrong. I did find an earlier published clinical trial that showed cognitive improvements in humans with 3.3 milligrams per day, so possibly a lower dose is effective when dealing with humans. The first test they did was to look at the protective effects of spermidine in vitro against hydrogen peroxide-induced oxidative stress. The graph on the left is showing a line of mouse liver cells, while that on the right, SKHEP1, are human. The graphs show the percentage of viable cells. And we can see that with hydrogen peroxide added, this was reduced to about 50%, and was rescued in those with added spermidine to about 90%. 
CQ is colloquine, an inhibitor of autophagy. And we can see that if this is added, the impact of spermidine is considerably reduced, showing that the action of spermidine is in part at least through enhancing autophagy. This was later confirmed in vivo, where they used transgenic mice with autophagy disabled and saw that spermidine was not as effective. In vivo, they looked at several markers for liver endothelium tissue health after the mice were treated with CCL4 or with CDAAH diet. This graph shows CD32B activity, a well-established marker for endothelial dysfunction, where an increased level is healthier. In both cases, we can see that the addition of spermidine increased the levels of CD32B, showing an improved endothelial phenotype. These results are showing that spermidine helped protect the liver endothelium in vitro and in vivo. They looked at other tissues in the liver beyond the epithelium. Preemptive treatment with spermidine did reduce fibrosis in the liver, as measured by collagen deposits with serious red dye, in carbon tetrachloride model on the left, but not in CDAH diet model on the right. However, it did reduce the buildup of dead cells in the toxic model, and significantly so in CDAH model, showing a reduction in apoptosis. There was slight lowering of the two common markers of liver health, AST and ALT, in the serum. It was below the significance level, but they are the measures that I am most familiar with, so I have also included them. In conclusion, they note that taking spermidine improved the health of other tissues as well as the liver lowering fat deposits and blood glucose. Spermidine supplementation could help in liver function and slow fibrosis progression. It's easy to supplement with diet and is well tolerated with no documented side effects. Spermidine has been shown to have other benefits as an inducer of autophagy. So this is interesting as it is showing that preemptive supplementation with spermidine may help protect the liver from damage and maintain better function.